It's September 15th, 1963. 200 people have gathered in the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. They're waiting for services to begin, when suddenly a bomb explodes. Bricks and mortar are sprayed from the church, and the walls inside begin to collapse. The scene is chaotic as church members, stunned, try to escape the smoke-filled building. While most people are able to get out, more than 20 are injured, and four young girls die beneath the rubble in a basement restroom. Though Birmingham's white supremacists are immediately suspected in the bombing, for 14 years, no one is brought to trial. This terrifying attack was just one of many violent hate crimes perpetrated by the Ku Klux Klan. And people that were trying to register to vote were being beaten and shot at and fired from their jobs and having their houses burned down and um, some people had even been killed. Founded in 1866 by six Confederate veterans opposed to the abolition of slavery, the Ku Klux Klan originally targeted African Americans. Eventually their targets included Jews, Catholics, gays, and immigrants. They used intimidating tactics in their pursuit of white supremacy, taking part in lynchings, burning crosses in people's yards, and bombing churches, homes, and vehicles. Often local police departments and government officials were active members of the Klan, so did little to protect its victims. Many of them were in law enforcement, too. I mean, law enforcement, southern community and state law enforcement were very, very racist and part of the entire system that, that kept African American people down by violence and terror. And there was a man that was on the police force who was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. When I would, I or my friends would be walking, he would like circle around in his police car and say nasty things to us. The Klan peaked between 1920 and 1925 with over four million members. After its influence faded in the late 1920s, it came back with more hate than ever in the 1950s and 60s, opposing the civil rights movement. Since the Klan wanted white supremacy, they attacked those who advocated for equality. People who favored equal rights for blacks and whites, however, stood up to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror and violence, taking action to oppose it. Early in the history of the Klan, President Ulysses S. Grant helped secure the United States during Reconstruction. He began to institute civil and voting rights and suppressed the Ku Klux Klan. While he was president, the Enforcement Act of 1871 was passed, allowing President Grant to declare martial law, impose heavy penalties against terrorist organizations, and use military force against the Klan. Writer Thomas S. Neuberger points out that Grant's campaign put the fear of federal power into the Klan and shattered its sense of impunity. Not for decades would the Knight Riders exercise such influence again. Also opposing the Ku Klux Klan were the Deacons for Defense and Justice, a group of African American veterans of World War II and the Korean War. Founded in 1964 in Jonesboro, Louisiana by Ernest Thomas and Frederick Douglass Kirchpatrick, the Deacons for Defense and Justice was founded to protect members of the Congress for Racial Equality. By taking on the Klan, the Deacons for Defense forced the government to get involved and began to quell the Klan's power and influence. They were the first self-defense group in the South, helping people access their right to vote and protecting white and black civil rights workers. Leroy Percy also took a stand against the Ku Klux Klan, perhaps because people close to him were members of groups the Klan targeted. Not only was his own wife Catholic, but his business partner was Jewish. Additionally, his 20,000 acre plantation relied on African American labor. In 1922, Percy confronted the Ku Klux Klan when it planned to recruit members at the Greenville County Courthouse. In a speech there, Klan leader Joseph Camp attacked blacks, Jews, and Catholics. When his speech was over, Percy took the stage, refuting Camp's claims. He said, Friends, let this Klan go somewhere else, where it will not do the harm that it will in this community. Let them sow dissension in some community less united than ours. The audience cheered and the community rallied, pushing the Klan out of the town. He used nonviolence to take down the Klan. 
There's nothing passive about nonviolence, by the way. It can be a very active um, way to go. It made me, it made almost all of us who were part of the civil rights work, work movement feel that in the rest of our lives we should continue to do things to try to make the world a better place for equality or justice in some kind of way um, for